For the second day in a row, Megalopolis gets back into the headlines. Francis Ford Coppola addresses Megalopolis $120 million budget at Cannes. And I said this yesterday. Yeah, it costs $120 million. He put $100 million of it of himself, like his own money, into it. Um, and it, it, it breaks my heart, but I understand why he says the money doesn't matter. Because this is something that he's been working on since the 80s. This is a passion project. He's in his 80s, guys. So it's kind of like, this is a movie I want to make for a long time. No studio's giving me the money for this. I'm making this movie. And for that, I respect Francis Ford Coppola. And that's going to be all over the trades today, guys. And it's heartbreaking because you've heard the early buzz for Megalopolis. Um, people are saying messy, maddening, but it's a masterpiece. So I don't know if it's messy because of the... Uh, narrative structure of the film or if it's just kind of like tonally all off because we're seeing in the trailers for it that it goes to some pretty funky places but you know what if this is like your last movie and you want to go out doing something that you want to do i respect it yesterday we talked about the uh, money issue 120 million because of reviews that are kind of like meh I don't know if it's for me. It's a little too artistic. It's not going to make $120 million at the box office. It's gotten, it's securing up its IMAX release uh, schedule, but it, it, it's not going to make $120 million. The best thing that can happen for this movie is that a bunch of us hardcore movie fans go out and see it, and we look at it and say, okay, uh, I know it's a little artistic, but... Give it a chance, and that'll that will maybe make fifty million back. But I'll be shocked if it even makes fifty million at the box office, guys. Uh, typically, these movies, these kinds of movies, don't make that kind of bank. And I'm looking at movies like that are could be in the same wheelhouse. Um, Bo is afraid is in that wheelhouse, uh, and you know how much I roasted that one last year from. Uh, from Ari Aster, where they were dealing with some abstract uh, ideas, 67 by critics, 71 by the audience. Um, but I, even in that one, as I said, it was too long. The story felt all over the place. I could understand that there were still some artistic endeavors in there that, like, the final third act worked for me in Bo is Afraid. It just took too long to get there, and it kind of ruined my experience of the film. So... Um, I, I just, I got nothing but respect for uh, Francis Ford Coppola. So when he says other things for like slamming the studio system, he says, Megalopolis execs don't make good movies. They pay their debt obligations. So he's getting a little bit at the, uh, the politics behind some of the big studio executives owing favors to people saying, okay, um, I owe you a favor. We're going to green like that movie. We're going to make things like, um, like, uh, Bo is afraid or, uh, even worse, um, the strangers chapter one, because, uh, that's how these things get made. Um, and it's, um, you just, you're just mind boggled as to, wow. Why? Why? Um, and it's, yes, Strangers will make its money back because it didn't cost that much. And it's a horror. Horror fans are going to go out and watch horror. But it's, because of that also, that's why movies like Megalopolis struggle for financing. Right? So there's a big article up on Variety about this where uh, he goes into his uh, thoughts. Quote, I fear, I fear that the film industry has become more of a matter of people being hired to meet their debt obligations because the studios are in great, great debt. And the job is not so much to make good movies. The job is to make sure they pay their debt obligations. So talking about timing and stuff and uh, uh, quotas for shareholders, like quarterly results and stuff like that. Um which is definitely, well, it's business. And that's going to be an aspect of all business. 
unfortunately, uh, and it's kind of like when it, you try to make uh, art, it's hard to negotiate and dance through all those landmines of the business side of things. And uh, Francis Ford Coppola is learning that the hard way. But hopefully through shows like this, uh, where we get to talk to movie fans and we get to consult with each other and stuff, maybe small movies like I Saw the TV Glow will get enough recognition uh, by the audience and say, okay, well, you know what? Maybe the smaller movie uh, is worthy of my dollars over the big overproduced uh, Hollywood uh, formulaic horror movie like The Strangers, Chapter 1. Megalopolis. It is one of my most anticipated movies of the year now because uh, of how abstract it looked. I am a Francis Ford Coppola fan. Uh, I like the cast. I like the aesthetic of the way the trailer looked. But I am going to be um, cautious going in. Uh because we read these headlines of the reviews kind of thing, like it's a little bit messy, it's ungainly, epic crams in a lot of uh, uh, stars and decades worth of ideas. So maybe it's overreaching, but you kind of look at it as a, a master's, a master filmmaker's last opus kind of thing. That's the way I look at it. Like we just found uh, some lost sheet music from Mozart Let's, let's play it up, man. I want to listen to it. Uh, this is Coppola's last big big hurrah. I'm, I want to check it out. Don't you? Megalopolis. What do you guys think? Oh, coming to theaters this week, uh, this fall, guys. Uh, when we get an exact release date, I'll let you know as soon as possible. All right. Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis debuts with 20%. Oh, no. Can we substantiate that? Fifty percent. So that's an old report. Well, yeah, that was eighteen hours ago. So it's climbed a bit with twenty-four reviews. So let's take a look at what the snapshots are. Have we got some snapshots yet? No snapshots yet. Oh no, yeah. Only twenty-four reviews. Screen Rant. Megalopolis isn't just a transcendental delight for the senses. It's a manifestation of Coppola's dreams for humanity and his dedication to cinema. From Brittany Witherspoon. Times UK. This is 138 stullifying minutes of ill-conceived themes, half-finished scenes, Nails along the blackboard performances, word salad dialogue, and ugly visuals, all seemingly in search of a story that isn't there. Bummer. And I don't care. I'm still going to go out and see it. You guys know how I felt about it. I said my piece about it earlier. Um, is there a way that I can somehow cut all of this together and put it together? Maybe. Maybe. So early reviews are coming in, and we, we were expecting this. We were anticipating it. I know what you did last summer to be released last next year. Yeah, we talked about that. Mike Faced at Con. Francesca Scorsese. Invasive Species. Sabrina Breyer. Do I know her? Her face looks vaguely familiar. Maybe I'm confusing her with that girl from Fall. For Life, Abbott Elementary. Okay, so it's just a bunch of, it's a few TV things. Nothing of substance. You just liked her because she had blonde hair, James. Ah, so what? 
Next. <laughs> Shogun. 